Trent Condon alongside former Hawkeye running back LaShawn Daniels on today's Locked On Hawkeyes. Breaking things down, a big win, a West, West Division Championship. Quick turnaround for the team as they play Black Friday. We break it all today down on Locked On Hawkeyes. You are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon. He's LaShawn Daniels, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you get your podcasts, and you can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, hit that subscribe button. It just takes a second. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. LaShawn, it wasn't easy on Saturday. Iowa in a dogfight once again against Illinois, but they found a way. The long touchdown run by Caleb Johnson, and then a third and eight run sealed it as Iowa wins the division, punches their ticket to Indianapolis, and with it gets ready to face off against either Ohio State or Michigan. We'll get your thoughts on that game coming up a little bit later when we get into our picks, but Another team victory, complimentary football. Feels like they're figuring this thing out in November, huh? Yep. Yeah, it's like it is every single year. I feel like I was literally one of the best teams in all calls football during the month of, of November. And it's just things that we that we talk about, we've talked about all year. I mean, they they keep it sticky, they make it tough, they keep always keep the games close going into, you know, late, late in the ball game, especially in November. And then you know, they play their Iowa football uh, way and uh, find a way to, to finish off the game and come out with the victory. So it was great to see that uh, on Saturday against Illinois. We like to talk, obviously, about the running game and the running backs. And I want to go to Caleb Johnson, a guy that we both love the talent. Uh, the talent is indescribable. The size at you know, 5'11", 215 pounds. He looks like he's chiseled out of granite. You couple that with the speed that he has, and you saw that on the touchdown run. In terms of big playability, he is definitely the most talented of the running backs in the stable right now. But a guy that was banged up this season, he's been injured, certainly not the season that I think either of us anticipated for him. Didn't even get to play in Wrigley Field. Uh, it was a coach's decision is what we were told after the football game. But didn't sulk. Didn't uh, start making phone calls about the portal when it opens up. Instead, he did the work, right? And we talked about it with Caleb Brown a week ago, getting out of the doghouse and the di difficult nature of that. For Caleb Johnson, a, a guy I know you really respect, just what a great moment it was with him getting that touchdown. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, uh, you're you're gonna go through adversity as a as a player. It's it's very rare that you're just gonna have you know that that perfect perfect career where nothing ever really goes wrong. Um, everything's always perfect. It it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. College football doesn't happen in life. Right? So um, for him to stay the course and stay engaged really and keep working from you know being named the starter to being down the third on the depth chart to being off the depth chart and going through all of that adversity and still being able to show up hey late in the ball game uh, the team needs a play and you're in there and you're able to go in and make that play is um you know you, you got to get a bunch give a bunch of credit to Caleb and just the way that he's handled himself and the way that I would assume that he's been working uh, behind the scenes to be able to put himself in a position um, like that. And then, Hey, when his number was called, he was able to step up and, and make the play that the, that the team needed. It was impressive and maybe even more impressive than the touchdown run third and eight and the touchdown run. You can see great seal block. They were able to kick it out, and the safety just wasn't fast enough to to have the angles. They were going with a one-deep safety uh, basically throughout the whole football game. Third and eight play, though, everybody in the stadium, everybody watching on TV, they know I was running the football. There's nothing tricky there. They're going to run the football, make Bielema use his final timeout, maybe kick a field goal to make it 18-13. With everybody knowing that it's coming to you on that play to get the third and eight run just a little bit of a crease, that was eye-opening. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was what the team needed. I mean, we've seen uh, Illinois have success with the offense and with their offense throughout the game, even though again they only put up thirteen points. But we saw that they had the ability to be able to move the football. They've done it and all basically all year up to that point. So it felt like. It felt like it's one of those situations where it's like, oh, here we go again. They're going to have to, they're going to get stopped, uh, you know, kick the field goal. And then now it's going to come down to the defense. But for it to be able to, for us to be able to end it on offense, I thought was huge. And again, Caleb making a, making a great run um, to be able to, to get the first down. Cause again, like, you know, that you in the whole, uh, you know, that you can end the game, especially like coming out, out of the timeout. Like, you're, you're having those discussions around the coaches. You're like, um, and you kind of talked about like some of your, maybe your best run play, something that you feel confident that you're not going to lose yards with it. And, you know, usually coaches are like, uh, they go ahead and they'll ask you, like, do you think you can get this? And, and you know, this and that, and, mm-hmm. uh, to have that confidence in him and then to go out and execute you on a third and long play at, at that, uh, thought was super impressive. And, um, it was a, Great classic, classic Iowa football finish that that I love to see. One uh, one more on Saturday before we take a look forward to Black Friday and the matchup against Nebraska and a couple of interesting angles there. Uh, start with Brian Ferentz, a guy that was the offensive line coach when you were there, a guy that you know incredibly well, a guy that played football there, and obviously Kirk's son. I mean, there was a lot of emotion on the sideline. There's been a lot of emotion, I'm sure, over these last what, five weeks now, ever since it was announced that he is not going to be back for the 2024 season. Uh, seeing him and Kirk, the embrace after the game, the Gatorade bath or the water bath that he got uh, after the game from the, some of the players, it just, you could see, look, I have been as critical of Brian Ferentz and necessary, and I'm happy that he is not going to be there anymore because just frankly, I don't think he's very good as an offensive coordinator. A good football coach, sure just not as an offensive coordinator for you as a former player, somebody that knows Brian Ferentz well, uh, your takeaway from what we saw at the end of the football game. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Um, I know we talked a, lot, a little bit last week on the pod about how emotional that it's going to be with um, it being senior day and um, coach Brian's last uh, game in Kinnick as a, as a really as a, uh, as a coach and, um, all the emotions surrounding there and for them to go out, get the win. And then you see, uh, first off, for them to go out and get the win and, and do it on offense and then see um, Coach Brian and see um, KF and, and embracing each other uh, at the end of the game. And then, uh, you know, the, the Gatorade bath at the end and just seeing everybody in, embrace uh, Coach Brian definitely uh, put a smile on my face. That's for sure. Um, and I, and I really did love to see that. Cause I mean, again, I, I have a ton of respect for Brian, um, uh, loved what he did as an offensive line coach when I was there and as the run game coordinator, when I was there, I mean, I had some, some good seasons there. So I give him uh credit, a bunch of credit about that. So, um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic seeing, seeing, seeing that. And, um, let's see, wish, wish Brian the best where, wherever he ends up. And I'm sure he's not going to stop coaching. I'm sure he's going to going to find a, find himself a home and um, do a great job there. But yeah, I, I really, really love seeing that at the end of the game. And yeah, uh, I, I was, I was, I was pretty pumped about that. And I was pumped for, for coach Brian and I was pumped for uh, KF. So. Yeah, it was a definitely a great moment. One, I think that's going to be remembered for a really long time. Well, it's a quick turnaround as it always is with the black Friday game, one less day of preparation, one less day to heal. And Kirk, I don't know if, was tongue in cheek. He was talking about the potential of maybe some guys sitting out because well, he already got the division clinch. We'll talk about that with LaShawn here and what it's like preparing with that quick turnaround. We'll do that as we continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. As a small business owner, two things jump out. Faster, absolutely. Time is money when you're running your own business and for free. That sounds pretty good too. Add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. That spreads the word that you're hiring. 
and it has simple tools like screening questions. Makes it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Trent LaShawn back with you once again here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. LaShawn, Black Friday, Nebraska, don't like them, but this is different. Division's locked up. You're not playing for playoff positioning. This team's not going to get to the college football playoff. In the grand scheme of things, there's nothing to be gained this game. I don't know if Kirk was joking. He might have been. Or realizing, look, you have a chance of winning a Big Ten championship for the first time since 2004. Is it a real chance? We could argue that. But even if it's a 2% chance, and if it is, sitting some guys out, getting guys healthy, maybe even play the first half only, and then you go to the backup, whatever it is, I understand it. It's an NFL mentality. We just don't see this in college football. Yeah, you really don't. Um, yeah, you really don't. Uh, mainly because, again, with the first off, with the last week of the year typically being rivalry week, typically teams and uh, coaches and players, they're not going to want to sit that that last week of the year, even if they do have the divisions uh, locked up. And a lot of times, um, you know, you find yourself having to play that that last week anyway, because, again, the divisions aren't locked up. You haven't clinched a, a playoff spot like you do in the NFL necessarily and uh, things like that. So typically, yeah, you don't see it. But see, Iowa being in the position that they are in, they do have the luxury of wanting of, of doing that if they want to. I don't think that they will, to be honest. Uh, I don't think that they will, um, knowing that it is. Uh, a rivalry game, it's a trophy game, and I know how much everyone on the staff and on the team uh, likes or loves to really win those trophies and, and beat rivals. So I don't think that it will happen, but it could, and they do have the opportunity to do that if they want to, considering that, hey, their ticket to Indy is already punched. They can start getting prepared on, on Michigan or Ohio State, whoever um, – you know, comes out on top this weekend and start getting prep for them uh, for Indy. But yeah, I don't think I don't think that it'll happen. I'm with you. It's very difficult to believe in kind of the way that this program is built to see something like that, something where you got a bunch of guys sitting out this week. I just don't anticipate it. Want to talk about Black Friday and what it is before that? Locked On has launched a for their first devil national sports it's a 24 7 streaming channel on youtube locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top stories in sports across the day with our local experts across locked on plus our national shows that cover every league what you want to do right now go to locked on sports today on youtube hit the subscribe button for the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel all right LaShawn, black friday it's nebraska it's uh well a program that you're a little younger than me. You you maybe barely remember the Halcyon days, even of the the mid nineties there. You remember when they were running and still running the triple option at Tommy Frazier and company, but it's been a power for a long time, dating back to the seventies. Has not been the case the last couple of decades. Um rivalry games though. It's different. You're an Ohio guy. The rivalry game from Iowa State to Minnesota to Wisconsin to Nebraska. You know, I tell people all the time, I'm from North Iowa. Got a lot of family in Minneapolis, friends and family that went to Minnesota. That's my favorite rivalry game. If you're in Dubuque, it's probably the Wisconsin game. You're in the Quad Cities, it's Illinois. You're here in Des Moines, it's Iowa State. But if you're on the western side of the state, dealing with those bug eaters over there, it's definitely Nebraska. For you guys as players, what was the biggest rivalry game? Yeah, I I think it kind of depended upon like where you were from, uh, to be honest. I think it... Mm -hmm. uh, like obviously, like if you were if you were an uh, in-state guy, um, see Iowa State is always going to be that's always one of the ones. Right? You want to be able to you want to be your be your in-state rivals, um, no matter what. But I felt like if you were from out of state, and it, it, I don't know, it just depended upon just depended upon 
where you're from and kind of what attracted to you. I know we talked a little bit on here. My favorite rivalry is definitely Minnesota. Uh, I just love everything about it. Love the the history behind it, um, the trophy behind it. I I, I just love that one. Um, but yeah, I think as a player, it just kind of varied. It varied um, year to year, um, to be honest, and the the makeup of your team and kind of where your where your players are from. But every single one, um, we would treat we would honestly treat it the same because there's a trophy on the line. Um, and especially when you get to play a traditional, um, you know, powerhouse like like Nebraska and them being a rivalry, like when you get the opportunity to, to play them and, and really beat them, uh, you know, the team definitely gets excited and gets jacked up for, for, for it for sure. Black Friday, the means you get one less day of preparation. What What was this week like knowing – one last day, you got your routine, you go through it over you know, the course of the whole season, 11 games in, and now you got a little bit of a change in the schedule. How different was it, and how difficult was it with that one last day to get healthy and doing it at the end of the season? Yeah, uh, I would say most for the most part, the game week was very similar to how we've done it um, before. Uh, thankfully, um, with like fall break, you don't really have to worry about uh, you know, like, like classes and, and that much, like as you get like later into the, into the week um, with, uh, you know, obviously everyone being off uh, of school. So that part of it was nice. Um, so you just basically focused on football. You didn't really have to worry about anything else. And then um, uh, you essentially lose an extra contact day, but pretty much at this point in time in the year, we're not really doing that much contact. Like it'll be, like it'll be a quick maybe like nine on seven period or a quick like third and short period. Nothing, nothing too impactful at this point in time. So it was more kind of like I felt like it was more like an NFL uh, type practice mode. Um, I felt like leading up this this week because again you don't you you lose that extra day um, of rest and recovery where typically like later in the week we would have one entire day off. We can't really have that because. Again, it's a shortened week. We're playing on Friday instead of playing on a traditional Saturday. So those things you, you miss out. And the fact that you do have Thanksgiving and a lot of people are you know, missing not being around other families. So we would have like a little like uh, Iowa football Thanksgiving. We would have at the complex. Coaches would bring their families and, and stuff. And uh, we would have like Thanksgiving meals catered. So it was there would be like some little, little things here and there that, that changed with this week. But for the most part, everything stayed the same. It just we we just cut out one one of the one one of the our tip traditional days of uh, practice or or rest and recovery. So we hear about this a lot in the NFL with the Thursday games. I mean, physically, just with one less day, and especially at the end of the season, is it impactful? I mean, can can you feel it when you're trotting out there and warming up on Black Friday, knowing, boy, that extra day of uh, rest would have been really nice right now. <laughs> uh yeah i would i would say so um and when i think uh kind of to my my personal experience uh like my very really much like later in the last half of my senior year of the season i was dealing with uh basically like a like a nagging knee injury that was just kind of bugging me for a while and mm -hmm. uh you know having like that extra day through, uh, throughout the week was was very nice but learn like leading into that Nebraska game, like my knee was just, it was, it was killing me and not having that extra day uh, sucked. And I had to wear like a, I had to wear like a, like a bigger brace uh, to help like keep it compressed and keep like swelling and stuff down. Where as, Hey, if I had the extra day, probably wouldn't have had to deal with that. Um, could probably have gotten away with a smaller brace, but maybe able to keep some, some inflammation and swelling down and things like that. So like, when it comes to like nagging injuries like that, having that extra day is something that can be very, very helpful. And it, and you don't even really get the benefits. I mean, I should take that back playing in the big 10 championship game. You do get the benefit though of playing on that Friday. Cause now you get, mm -hmm. you essentially get two days on um, your opponent that you happen to be playing. Uh, so that's one thing I know that they're going to be looking forward to coming out of Friday's game. Um, because now, hey, you get to relax on Saturday. Um, and while, you know, their 
still reviewing film from you know the, the day before and getting prepped for uh for iowa you're essentially going to have two days on, on on them to hopefully use to our advantage we haven't it hasn't worked out in our favor yet but hopefully hopefully this time around it'll go ahead and benefit us so uh, yeah, looking forward to that and the opportunity is going to be in front of them. They'll be back home, back in Iowa City and a chance to watch that one. We'll talk about that. Excuse me just a moment, as you can tell. I'm uh, dealing with a little bit of a cold here. Uh, Thanksgiving cold. It seems like it comes around every single year. All right, we continue here, Locked On Hawkeyes, and we're going to make our picks. I finally got LaShawn last week. I went 4-1 and one against the number. We got five games, including, of course, Iowa, Nebraska, and the big game, the game, it is Ohio State and Michigan. LaShawn, he's got a little uh, different kind of uh, memories of that game. We'll get into that as we continue <laughs> here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Our picks presented by FanDuel. That's coming your way next as we continue Lockdown Hawkeyes. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of having to battle thousands of other players, including pros, sharks, the guys with their spreadsheets and everything else, algorithms, no, you just pick more or less of a two to six player stat projection, and then you can watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks, taking a look at what they have going on right now. Basketball season is here, and on their specials league, you can do combo projections, both with football and basketball. For example, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey, a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made and receptions. They got you covered there. Football, basketball, so much going on. Prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Right now, go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown college and use code lockdown college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that that's price picks.com slash lockdown college with the code lockdown college for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Trent LaShawn back with you one final time here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day, your team every day. That's what we do here on the Lockdown Network as we make our way to Thanksgiving. Great weekend, of course, of football. We'll get into Iowa, Nebraska, Ohio State, Michigan, and a whole lot more. But well, I guess right now, LaShawn, it is uh, my honors. I got it this week. I finally <laughs> nipped you. So you're uh, dominating the season series. I got to get that thing updated as we make our way next week to championship week and see exactly where we are in terms of the numbers. Going to start first with the game. It is Ohio State. They're getting three and a half right now at FanDuel at Michigan. Now, watching the Wolverines a week ago, uh, it looked like a tired team, a mentally tired team. And they've had, obviously, so much going on here. They'll be playing without Jim Harbaugh. J.J. McCarthy has been pretty ordinary when Harbaugh has not been on the sidelines. I don't know if you can talk a whole lot about that, but I think it's something at least to take a peek at here. And this, a week ago, even before the Maryland game for the Wolverines, I was leaning towards Ohio State, and I think I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab the points. Give me the Buckeyes plus the three and a half. Yeah. Um, I think we're going we're, we're gonna to be in agreement here. Uh, I've we, we picked a few Ohio State games this, this year, and I've, seen them get better and better um throughout this the season and they've been playing really really good football really over the last month or, or so and their defense has been playing phenomenal and yeah you you mentioned it last week there was just something something was just off there was just something that, that wasn't really there and i know that they're going to get up and they're going to be ready to go this week but yeah i don't know i had some question marks especially around uh mccarthy's play and knowing that the way that Ohio State's been playing defense this year, I I think this is the year Ohio State gets back on that that track and ends that that uh, Michigan losing streak. But if that doesn't happen, who who knows what's going to happen over in Columbus? But give me the Buckeyes <laughs> on this one. 
Yeah, Coach Third Base over there, Ryan Day. Uh, we'll see if there's a, a few more barbs thrown his way and if they can't get this one done. Let's go to uh, game number two. Really a fun one, I think, here. Oregon State, they're getting 13 and a half against Oregon. Uh, two teams, they'll be probably wearing some crazy color combinations. It'll look like highlighters out there with the orange of the Beavers and whatever color that Oregon goes with here. Oregon, a game away from locking up their spot in the Pac-12 title game and a chance to maybe avenge their only loss of the season. 13 and a half the number, LaShawn. Yeah. Um, so with this being a rivalry, I think Commissioner Winston wants me to say, yeah, this is going to be close. They're going to they're gonna play it tight. But I think with Oregon knowing what's at stake at this point in time in the year, knowing that, A, they need this to get into uh, – Pac-12 championship game, and they need this to get them in position to be uh, in the playoffs. By uh, hey, if they can beat uh, Washington, like this is what this is. They they think they understand is what what's at stake. Uh, I like the way that they've been been playing ever since uh, after that Washington game. And they've been, I think, one of the best teams in the country since. And I think that their play is going to continue, and they're going to continue playing at a high level. So so give me the ducks on this one. Uh, they should they should take care of business. It's our first disagreement of the day. I'm going with the Beavers here. Love Martinez, a running back, a guy that just grinds it out. They're going to try to shorten the game. They're going to have to score. They know that. I think they can, and I think they can uh, keep this thing relatively cozy. Give me the Beavers plus the 13 and a half. Pick number three, Iowa State going down to K-State. It's Farmageddon with the Wildcats and the Cyclones getting together here. Iowa State hung around last week against Texas, didn't ultimately get the cover, but at least hung around for a while, had a chance there in that football game. I think the same thing here. I, I don't see Kansas State running away. Iowa State, they solidified their spot with the bowl game. Nothing to play for, but I, I think the Cyclones will at least hang around here. I'm going to grab the 10 and a half with ISU. Yeah, uh, we're going to be in agreement. I don't think, uh, again, they played Texas tough uh, last week, but didn't cover, but I think this week, Again, they're gonna they're gonna continue to, to play hard. They're gonna play tough. They're not gonna pull it out, but they'll they'll definitely keep it keep it closer than that that ten and a half. So so give me give me the cyclones. Well, hopefully they don't let me down again this week. <laughs> Let's go uh, next to the Iron Bowl. It is Auburn against Alabama. One of the great rivalry matches every single year. Auburn absolutely fell on their face a week ago, paying one point eight million dollars for New Mexico State to come to town. And whip their butt. Uh, that was an eye opener there. There is something, though, about this rivalry game and something that throughout time there have been major upsets. There have been things that are eye opening. And I think the same thing happens here. It it almost smells that this point spread. It feels like you should be getting a whole lot more points with Auburn. And because of that, I'm going to sniff out this long. Give me the Tigers. <sighs> and I, 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 I was in agreement with that. Um, and maybe if like Alabama had been undefeated up to this point and um, was, was sitting pretty, but ah, knowing how uh, they, they missed their opportunity last year to compete for a title when they felt like that they should have been in there and knowing that they're essentially two games away from being back in the playoffs and being back to where we expect uh, Alabama to be. I, I feel like this isn't this isn't going to be one that they're going to let slip by. I know Auburn has given uh, Nick Saban and Alabama their their troubles over the years, but I, I can't see them letting up, letting up a dud on this one. Not before uh, getting ready to play Georgia in the SEC championship, essentially with the playoff spot on the line. So they know they're going to have to come out and they're going to have to play well um, to be able to to compete for that. So give me give me Alabama. Going with the tide. We wrap things up as we do each and every week with Iowa. They're getting a point and a half now against Nebraska. A historic low total once again in this game, down to 26 and a half at a couple of spots. It's on 27 yesterday at FanDuel. It's a low total. We don't do totals here, though. We talk about the spread. And, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm going to take the, uh, the other team again because Iowa just keeps finding a way to win games. And, well, we got the cover last week with Illinois getting three. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'll go with Nebraska again and, and hope to be wrong. Prove me wrong, Hawks. Give me Nebraska minus the one and a half. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've liked some of the things that Nebraska has been doing over over, over the season. They, they had their, they've had their struggles. They've been up and down um, a bunch, and they lost a, lost a tough one 
last week, but it's it's that November Iowa team and the way that they're playing right now. I felt like is um, they're 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 just keeping every keeping everything in front of them. They're keeping everything tight and sticky, and it gets late into the fourth quarter, and then they go ahead and then they they, they just finish it off, just playing their brand of football, forcing the other team to make a make a mistake, and Iowa stepping up. So I I think that they're gonna avenge that that loss from last year. I don't see them uh, dropping two in a row against Nebraska. So give me give me the Hawks in this one. Um, I love the way that they're playing, and they're going to want that that good momentum going into the title game. So, give me the Hawks. There, it, go Hawks. I'm with you. Prove me wrong. That's what we want to see. Again, Lockdown Sports has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on Loot YouTube. It's called Lockdown Sports Today, and it's here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts across the Lockdown Network, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. LaShawn, have a great Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Enjoy it. I know you're at, what, Grandma's Place? you got some good yep. cooking going on. Uh, what, yes. What's number one? What's what's at the top of the list? What are you excited for Grandma to be cooking Thanksgiving? Um, So Grandma makes a really, really good uh sweet potato pie and mm -hmm. uh potato salad so those are the two okay. things i'm gonna be looking for i'm gonna make my contributions with the mac and cheese which is crazy yeah. good if you if you've uh, never uh -huh. had mine you've never had good uh -huh. mac and cheese um and then you're, you're talking yeah, my we'll, language here LaShawn. <laughs> and we, we'll we have all kinds of other stuff <laughs> I'm a big guy. I love myself some mac and cheese. Well, next mm -hmm. time we get together, you can come to the tailgate and bring some. How about that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Well, have a great Thanksgiving, LaShawn. We'll uh, talk next week, and we'll talk about in preparation for a Big Ten championship game. Have a great Thanksgiving, LaShawn. Yep. Thank you. You too. Go Hawks.